Salesforce DevOps is a trending term that is becoming an increasingly important aspect of developing on the Salesforce platform. But for some, this may be a term you've barely heard of. In this ultimate guide, we'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in the world of Salesforce DevOps and how it can affect your career for the better. Hi, I'm Ben McCarthy, founder of SalesforceBen.com, and our mission is to help you advance your Salesforce career. Subscribe to our YouTube channel below and check out our extensive resources on salesforceben.com. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The broader term DevOps has been around since 2009 when it was first coined and is defined as the following. DevOps is a combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that aim to shorten the development lifecycle and provide a continuous delivery with high software quality. The following image shows a basic representation of the DevOps process. This process will be facilitated with tools, practices, to ensure effective software delivery between your technical team and your users or customers. Now, to talk through Salesforce DevOps, it's no different than the broader definition that is specifically centered around ensuring admins, developers, consultants, and architects can deploy changes and work through the software development lifecycle in the most effective way possible with minimal bugs or disruption to users. Salesforce DevOps practices and tools started to pop up around 2014. And generally, the Salesforce ecosystem has been slower to adopt DevOps than the general software market. Salesforce is a platform-based ecosystem, meaning that all development happens on the Salesforce platform. The traditional way of deploying changes between Salesforce environments happens through change sets, a declarative way to select which components to move between different environments. Whilst change sets have done the job for a number of years, Salesforce has significantly changed since Force.com was released in 2007, allowing customers to build custom applications on the Salesforce platform. The primary difference is the scale and scope of development on the platform. To successfully deploy a large scale application from various sandboxes to production, you could be deploying 100 fields, 10 Apex classes, 10 Lightning pages, and many more components that are attached via a dependency. If you were to attempt a large scale deployment with change sets, you're gonna face the following drawbacks. They can take a while to create as components are added manually. Deployment errors are also common and can be time consuming to fix. You can't deploy all components via change sets, such as standard pick list values or sales processes. Change sets have to be recreated or cloned each time they are moved to a different environment. For example, from dev to QA to prod. They also can't be integrated with a version control system to monitor changes between environments such as Git. Change sets are just one example where native Salesforce tools can fall down when complexity increases. If you are seeing issues or bottlenecks at any point in the Salesforce development lifecycle, then it may be time to look at some tools that can help. In contrast, by using Salesforce DevOps tools and processes, you can look to see the following benefits. Firstly, save more time from reliable deployments. Secondly, increasing release cadence from automation, which is CI-CD, which also leads to a tighter feedback loop. Thirdly, fewer bugs and errors ship to production thanks to better testing. And finally, better collaboration between devs and admins, partly because of the audit trail of who changed what and when, and also better security due to monitoring and backup. Now, what are some of these magical tools that can help you solve all your Salesforce deployment woes? Let's take a look. There has been a huge rise of Salesforce DevOps tools over the past few years. Independent software vendors or ISVs are coming up with unique ways to plug into the Salesforce platform and provide huge values to the teams developing on it. Let's take a look at the different categories of Salesforce DevOps tools and a few of the companies that are making this happen. One of the most popular and comprehensive types of tools on the market are deployment tools. Instead of using change sets or a command line utility such as the Ant migration tool, most Salesforce deployment apps have a specialized user interface packed full of features to make deploying and managing changes a breeze. Some of the features of these tools can include version control, where you can integrate with your favorite hosting provider such as GitHub to have full visibility into what was changed, why, when, and by whom. CI-CD take full advantage of continuous integration and delivery processes 
by creating an automated delivery pipeline of all your sandboxes. Rollback. Did you perform a deployment that hasn't worked as expected? Simply roll back the changes made to ensure there is minimal disruption to your users. Testing. Ensuring unit tests are run frequently and pass code coverage is essential to smooth deployments. Deployment tools can automate this process. And finally, reporting. The success of any process is the ability to monitor and adjust based on the performance of the team using the tools. Most Salesforce DevOps tools provide the ability to report on deployments. A deployment tool that you'll most definitely want to check out is the new Salesforce DevOps Center. This is a tool that has been in the works by Salesforce for a number of years and is now generally available. Salesforce sees this as their own replacement of change sets to align with modern DevOps processes. You should also check out a number of Salesforce app partner solutions that are designed to work standalone and sometimes alongside the Salesforce DevOps Center. Some of these include Gearset, Gepardo, Prodly, Flowsome, AutoRabbit, and Blue Canvas. Many Salesforce teams will already have test best practices built into their processes, such as ensuring all unit tests meet 75% code coverage and performing user acceptance testing. But test automation brings a whole new dimension to testing in Salesforce by ensuring all processes in your Salesforce org work as expected. Tools that operate in the test automation space can run scheduled tests in each Salesforce sandbox to ensure that whatever processes you have built into Salesforce such as qualifying a lead, clicking a button, or closing off a case, all work no matter what changes you've made. Tools that you'll want to check out in this space include Provar, Keysight, and Tricentis. Teams that rely on heavy custom development using Apex, Visual Force, and Lightning languages may want to check out code scanning tools. Even if you know how to write Apex, good developers will separate themselves apart by ensuring best practices and standardizations are followed to create clean, scalable code with minimal technical debt. Code scanning tools help teams of developers automate the manual process of reviewing Salesforce code and configuration. This ensures that all team members are following the same set of code standards, best practices, and ensuring an overall healthy looking Salesforce org. Check out Code Scan by AutoRabbit, Clayton, Quality Clouds, and Digisec as examples of these tools. At any one time in a fairly large Salesforce org, there'll be a huge amount of activity. This could be user activity, Salesforce errors popping up, and even the possibility of external security threats. Observability tools help you by constantly monitoring your Salesforce org and alerting you to certain types of activity that need looking into. Tools such as Pharos can track every single error in a Salesforce org and help you identify the root cause faster. Tools such as Obsidian Security and Datadog can alert you to suspicious user activity as well as external security threats. Backing up your Salesforce data should be an integral part of your Salesforce DevOps process. This includes not only your CRM data, but also your metadata. So let's have a look at both types of backup. Data backup. There are many ways to backup data in Salesforce, but using specialized apps makes the experience a whole lot more manageable. Instead of trying to juggle various CSVs you've downloaded, Salesforce backup tools provide a user interface that allows you to restore data from any point in time. This is important in the Salesforce DevOps world, so you're confident that data can always be restored in case of a dodgy deployment. And then we have metadata backup. Just as data backup is important to the DevOps lifecycle, so is your metadata backup. Imagine overwriting a complex flow or apex trigger, only to be told there is no backup. Metadata backup makes the DevOps cycle less risky, as rollbacks are always possible. Tools to check out in this space include Own Backup, Gearset, and Veeam. Before diving into our final section on how Salesforce DevOps can benefit your own career, it's important to mention Salesforce DX. Salesforce DX stands for Developer Experience and is a set of tools that Salesforce themselves have released to support moving organizations towards using DevOps. Most of these tools can sit alongside or integrate with many other of the apps we've talked about so far. Some of the Salesforce DX features include the Salesforce DevOps Center, as mentioned previously, to help organizations get away from change sets 
and start deploying changes using version control. Scratch orgs, a temporary development and testing environment. These types of orgs can be looked at as a new type of sandbox and have been designed to work alongside the Salesforce DevOps Center. Salesforce extensions for VS Code allow you to install a robust extension for Visual Studio Code, a popular tool for coding. Salesforce DX CLI, a core part of the Salesforce developer experience, is the powerful command line interface, CLI. The Salesforce CLI has commands for moving metadata between orgs and creating scratch orgs. So how can Salesforce DevOps benefit your career? We talk about career progression a lot at Salesforce Ben, as we love the potential that Salesforce professionals can realize across their careers. A lot of the progression involved in Salesforce is focusing down into a niche. This could be a niche role such as Solution Architect, Omni Studio Developer, or a Salesforce DevOps practitioner. Niche skills are more sought after, and Salesforce DevOps is no different. Overall, we are still in the early stages of Salesforce DevOps maturity, and we've got many years to go before the majority of companies are adopting DevOps tools and processes. For those that can grasp the philosophy, concepts, features, processes, and tools, you have a big leg up over your peers. This is particularly important when applying for new roles. As more companies start to adopt some of the tools mentioned in this video, those who know how to properly implement and utilize them will become great candidates to consider. I hope this video has lived up to its expectation and given you a complete overview of Salesforce DevOps in the ecosystem and how you can use the tools and features to benefit the companies you work for, as well as your own career. Subscribe to our YouTube channel below for more great Salesforce content and make sure to visit salesforceben.com to stay up to date on everything Salesforce. Boom.